You have an ANET ET4 that is sitting for a while and you didn't use it for a while like I did with my ANET ET4. Well, stay tuned because in this video I'm going to revive my ANET ET4. Hello, this is Zachary and in this video I'm going to revive my ANET ET4. Well, the last time that I used this 3D printer was in May last year, so almost a year ago. And since then it was sitting somewhere in a corner collecting dust and it is already sounding like a very sad story for this printer. So a little more TLC for this 3D printer. I'm going to clean it, I'm going to fix some issues and I'm also going to do some upgrades on this 3D printer, getting some very nice prints out of this ANET ET4. The first thing that we are going to do is cleaning the whole ANET ET4. The bed, the carriage, the Z-axis, the base of the 3D printer, making sure that everything is well cleaned with a cloth and also some IPA alcohol to also get all rid of the oil and grease from your hands, from the build plate. And putting a sticker like that somewhere else that it is visible for all to see. Normally the wires for the x-axis are going through the left side. I put them through the back of the machine. It's much more nicer like that. By the way, this is the main board for the ANET ET4. Then it was time to look for the hot end, nozzle, bowden tube and the extruder. Because I had some issues with some clicking sounds, so it was time to use one of the Capricorn tubes kit and replace the normal standard PTFA tube with a bowden tube from Capricorn. There are some special cutting tools to do that and once cut, make sure that you are pushing it in all the way through, making sure that it is a very tight fit. Also check the coupler. Did you know that this video is so supported by these awesome Patreon supporters, Loyal Moses, The Lightspeed, Fixum Dude and Carl Fenton. Thank you guys for your support. Also do the same thing on the side from the carriage, making sure that the Bowden tube is pushed in all the way through. Also check here the coupler. Hearing the clicking sound made me wonder what was wrong with the hot end. As a matter of fact, there was still a old piece of PTFA tube still in the hot end. I used a thick Allen key to push that little part out of the heat break and it was nasty. I can tell you that it is not looking very healthy to me. So that was out of the way. I cleaned the hot end further and also replaced it with a brand new nozzle, making sure that everything was tight fitted again. Also putting back the Bowden tube all back into the hot end and also checking the coupler. And now look to the result. No clock nozzle, no blockage and look how this filament is purged. Okay, now bed leveling, follow the instruction from the manual and you'll be fine. It took me quite a while since I was not touching this printer for a while. Well, for the heater bed, the connector doesn't look that nice. Thingy first, I found some very nice connector covers that I printed it in blue ABS on my CR200B, also in holder for the auto bed leveler. And the end result, it's looking very gorgeous. I also added four new bed lever knobs. Those were resized and fitted an M4 nut. And I cut also a piece of motor shaft away. The end results of the first three prints that I got out of the ANET ET4 are looking much more cleaner, much more shinier. Also the bottom part, because we are printing on a glass surface, it's looking very shiny. Some tweaking needs to be done in the slicer, but that's okay. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace. Bye bye.